Good morning, everybody. Another day has arrived right on schedule. Here it is. We have a few appointments in Winnipeg to take care of today. I've got to bring our uh, doctors a sample. And Britt's got to go in for a chiropractor visit. So let's get ourselves all woken up. Let's go buckle ourselves into the car and let's head into the city. Frosty out there. Yikes. And off we go, Timmy's in hand. To the big city at the center of the land. Gotta give the good doctors a sample. She's gotta go get cracked. That was kind of ridiculous. It's slowed down a lot now, but when I got here, the lineup was like all the way around down the sidewalk. We're lucky it's a nice day. I can't imagine making all those elderly people that were in line with me wait out in minus 30, but I guess that's what they're gonna do all winter. <laughs> so once I got in, they uh, they wanted some of my blood. They wanted my life source. I think they're gonna use it to create some kind of superpower. No? No comment? I'm too that angry is... about the medical system to comment. <laughs> yeah, well they're not in contact with our fertility clinic, because our fertility clinic is a private business, I believe. But it's government subsidized. Something I don't know what's going on. This is a government facility. Separate from the public health care system, but none of them communicate with each other. But we're all supposed to be on the same page, because we all have like health numbers. That's how our health system works. No one knows what's going on, but they took some blood from me here, some urine samples, and that's all they wanted. I thought they wanted a little bit more. I thought they wanted a special sample from me. Apparently not. They don't need that. Nope. Apparently not. I'm going to message the nurses and be like, WTF, man. Yeah. So uh, hopefully with everything that they got from me here now, we can restart and continue on our fertility treatments because they needed... Uh, I don't know updated what serology updated yeah updated stuff from me I, I have no idea everything is so crazy hopefully we can be on the way now so we got to go over to the other side of the city or just up the road to uh, uh, the west side of the city there and get her cracked by the Crack. chiropractor and that's at 2 30 right and it's only so? like 11 40 right now yeah we got time what are we gonna do I have no the idea. options are limitless oh they're completely limited actually that's true yeah there's only so much we can do no fun allowed nay nay especially in the city <laughs> you wouldn't want people to live their lives while they're still living right yeah that'd be terrible but anyway so uh we're gonna find something to do for the next couple of hours and uh get her cracked and then go home what an exciting day right they took my blood don't you just wish you could have a home like that So we're in Tuxedo, which is uh, the richest neighborhood in Winnipeg. One of the richest ones, anyways. This is where like the doctors and lawyers live. And they don't even plow their streets for them. I would be mad. Can't imagine what the taxes are like. Can you imagine, yeah, what the property taxes would be like here and they don't even plow your streets. Yeah. It's been days, like days and days since the last snowfall. Look at that. This is a... Uh, dreaming at its finest for us the dormers are beautiful yeah i mean it's not like hollywood beverly hills but it's a pretty nice area it's a very nice area i just wouldn't want to clean these houses i have cleaned some of these houses i used to work for a maid service cleaning big houses like this 
It sucks. No wonder all these women have maids and housekeepers. Yeah, a lot. Most of these homes have housekeepers. Yeah. Oh, look at this one. Oh, there you go. There's a box. Yikes. Just on the next street. Still hasn't been cleared. It's just been packed down. <laughs> so our house is probably worth about as much as like, these people's garage. Like, yeah. Their garage is probably worth more than our whole house. And our street gets cleared within hours of a snowfall. Exactly. Within hours. I mean, if it snows overnight and I get up for work at 6, the streets are clear. Ready to go. I don't know what's going on in this neighborhood here. but <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people writing some angry letters though. And I bet you the response back is, due to COVID. Yeah. We cannot clear your street. Yeah. The machine has COVID. And you can't buy a shovel because they're probably not essential. Probably not. <laughs> Blankets and pillows aren't. And a lot of these people here, they drive very expensive, like sports cars and stuff. Like now they have their winter vehicles out. But if, if we can find a house here, a lot of them have glass or some of them have glass garage doors that are very fancy. And inside you can see like the Audi sports cars and like a couple Porsches. Lamborghinis and Porsches in the area. And obviously they're not going to take them out in wintertime because they can afford to just park them. But we're in a bit of the older part of Shaftesbury Park now. So we're kind of going away from the really big fancy ones because it's a bit older. But back in the day, these would have been, well, back in like the 70s, the, these would have been big deals. This would have been a big deal. Let's go find the, the, the really big ones. That is nice. Look at this though. You need a four wheel drive to get in here. Good thing we got it. Yeah. I am, I, I know I, I keep talking about it. I'm actually very surprised though. That's a nice one. I love those windows and that porch. That's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Belongs on a country property though. Not in the middle of the city. No yeah. Yard. These people pay a lot of money to be like right next door and look into their neighbor's living room window. This is the older part. We have to go find the newer, nicer part. I mean, some of these are still very nice. The ones that have been maintained or updated. Mm -hmm. That's nice. The red brick is super outdated, but it would be a nice house if they updated it a bit. I like it. I like these old style houses. Looks like a giant gingerbread house. <laughs> oh, we're gonna get stuck. We're gonna have to call one of their rich tow trucks to come pull us out of here. So this is a, well, what are we gonna call this, box lane? Sure. Look at these houses. Would you live in a house like this? Just a square box? There's another one. I uh, used to clean, I think it's number 194 coming up here. Oh uh yeah? -huh. Was it one of those boxy ones? Yep. Yeah. And then you get a normal one. That kind of looks nice. It's all right. But. I would think that the boxy houses next to you would bring down your property value. Because no one, I wouldn't want to live next to the atrocity like that. No offense if you own this house and you're watching, I should be careful. <laughs> the people that owned it were very nice people. Oh, this one right here, this is the one you cleaned? I think so. I bet you it's um, gorgeous inside. They all look the same. Yeah, I bet you these are just gorgeous inside, but I, I can't get past the square look. It just... Yeah, no thanks. It looks like a business. Yeah. That's nice. He's a little bit higher of a peak, a higher of a slope on the roof. Look at us criticizing all these rich people's know, houses. Right? <laughs> Meanwhile, we live in a closet. <laughs> that one isn't good enough. That is ugly, I say. That peak is not right. <laughs> I don't know why we just turned British. Because <laughs> everything sounds more official in British. It does, in, in it the does. Accent. Yeah, more critique like. Come down to my box house and have some tea. All your British we, subscribers are just cursing your name right now. <laughs> and mine. We can sit in the garage and have our tea. Do they pronounce it right? Garage? Garage? <laughs> I'm not trying to make fun of you. Garage. <sighs> I know the the Australians, they they pronounce it like garage, garage, oh, gar garage. Gar How do you guys say it? Or the way that they say tattoo. 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 <laughs> Sorry guys. We still love you. We're bored. Yeah. This looks like what would you call it a, a Spanish villa? Yeah, Spanish style home. 
Something that belongs in like Miami. They got bars on the windows. Weird. These guys got bars on the windows too. Tuxedo, what happened to you? <laughs> well, maybe they don't. Maybe it's just a decoration. Probably just decoration. Wow. Just beautiful homes. No yards, but wow. Yeah, no yards and no snow clearing. It's sad when our closet has a bigger yard. <laughs> One more this one has a yard. Oh well, yeah, look at that. They probably got some grass. <laughs> that is, well that is super fancy. So do, how many of you do this? You ever just go like driving through the rich neighborhoods of your city? I always used to when I was younger. I've always done this. That's interesting. Why would you want your windows to be smaller than your fist? Yeah, that is kind of weird up there, eh? There's little beams of light coming into See, if you're in Winnipeg and you want to have an artsy fartsy house, this is where you want to be. A lot of artsy fartsy stuff going on around here. Emphasis on the fartsy. Yeah. This is nice though. I just don't like modern stuff. I'm a little more old school. That's very nice. I bet you in the 80s that was a super cool house. And now we're all like, why? That is interesting. Huh. It's a very particular taste, to put it nicely. One more street. One more street. This is where the mega, mega houses are. The other neighborhood that was just the poor rich people. <laughs> this is right along the river. So uh, houses over there on that side will be the primest real estate you can get in Winnipeg, as far as I'm, as far as I know. Wow, I can't wait to see what it's gonna look like. A lot of Christmas ornaments in that yard. Yikes. There's a house that's sold down here. It was the most expensive house in Winnipeg. I think it sold for, what was it, 10 million? building between Toronto and Calgary in Canada. I believe it's like 36 stories tall or something, so it's not, it's not very fancy or anything to show off or anything, but here we are. There it is, all the way up there. Not that tall, but for Winnipeg, that's pretty tall. I'd like to be on the top story. What do you think? It's not very impressive. Britt's gonna quickly look it up to see if I'm even right. I was told once that this is the tallest building between Toronto and Calgary in Canada. I mean, if you go birds, uh, like, uh, I, 
straight across. Obviously, you go across like the U.S. and the U.S. has much bigger buildings, but Toronto has massive skyscrapers and Calgary has massive skyscrapers, but this one, this one's our massive one. No, it's not? Definitely not. What does it say? I'm being fact-checked in real time here, folks. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure that the TD building's the tallest. Is it? At Portage, Maine, yeah. Is it taller than this one? I figured it was, yeah. Don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I was pretty sure that this one was just a few feet higher. Does it say? 55 Nosso. That's where that's, we are now. That's where we are now. Well, I guess it'll just remain a mystery. But it's on the list. <laughs> it is pretty tall. I can't jump that high, so that's tall. Okay, so the facts are in. The TD Tower, I think it's the Can West building now, isn't it? Yeah, that's something like that. Portage and Main with the glass going all the way up is 124 meters tall. This building here is 109 meters tall. So I was wrong, but I was close. It's the tallest apartment dwelling, let's say that. It's the tallest condo building between Toronto and Calgary. See, I just got my words a little mixed up, but I was still right. I was still right. The other building is a commercial building for like offices and stuff. But it's actually near the TD building because the TD building is 117 meters. The Richardson building is over. It's 128 meters. It's, there's mixed information all over this. I'm still right. my Italian followers, this is Little Italy in Winnipeg, Corridon. It's a nice area. It is very nice. A lot of, it's gelato, right? Ice cream, Italian ice cream? Gelato. Gelato? Yeah. A lot of that, a lot of nice restaurants down here. The Italians know how to do it right. Lots of pizza with pepperoni. Salami. <laughs> Winnipeg is actually known for its restaurants. It has the most restaurants per capita of any Canadian city, I think. Saffron's is a good one. Mm-hmm. Coliseo, or Coliseo, pardon me, that we just passed by. I hope they don't all go out of business because of these lockdowns. Well, they probably will. I hope I not. Because sad to say. This was always a busy street 
especially on the weekends, Saturdays, when I, I used to deliver Pepsi at these 7-Elevens down here. It was just packed with people, all having a good time. It was all nice, classy joints. Not too expensive, so you can't afford them. You can't go there every day, but not like out of reach for the average person. You can come here and have a good time with your family. Feeling any better, though? Mm. No. No. <laughs> Stop for a quick break here in uh, St. Adolph on the way home. It's amazing what a chiropractor can do though. Like, I honestly thought I had problems with my kidneys uh, for years. Uh, my right one, I thought. And I was going to my medical doctor and he was sending me through all of these tests. He couldn't figure out what it was because all of my organs were working just fine and they're doing great. And. Uh, couldn't figure it out. You know, my next step was an MRI. I still got to get that rescheduled because I still want to at least get it checked out. But uh, I, I went to the chiropractor and I told him what was going on. And he's like, okay, it feels around a bit, massages with his machine for a little bit, and then he just <laughs> cracked me once. And I could feel it from the top of my head right down to the soles of my feet. Just relief. Just sweet relief. Just. An amazing feeling. Ever since then, my back has been perfect. Like, it felt like I had a lump in my back, right below my rib cage on my right side, right where the kidney should be, approximately in that area. That's why I thought it was my kidney. Or maybe my liver, because my liver's on this side. I don't know what it was, it had something to do with my back. And I know that your spine is attached to your, your bowels and your stomach and all of your organs. So very often when you're having problems with your organs, apparently it could be connected to an issue with your spine that your chiropractor could fix. There it is. There's that face. Oh, you look like you're in pain. Always in pain. We also got to get a new bed. Hopefully this month, end of this month. Uh, new couches. But new couches. <laughs> that's going to be a while. But first, a new bed and a bed frame uh, so we can actually sleep like real, like big adults. Big adults? Like big kids. I was going to say like, like big people, but okay. like real adults and have an actual bed and bed frame and hopefully we can get a mattress that will uh give her back a little bit more support because my back's kind of wonky too it's it's not good to sleep on the floor like that for long mm -hmm. Where you go, man? Where you go? Chevy doesn't care. You care though, right? You love me. You love me. <laughs> so, we had to waste a lot of time between uh, my appointment and her appointment. We had like three hours to blow. That's why we went sort of just sightseeing, touring around uh, Winnipeg, looking at all the rich people's homes, homes that we'll never afford. Criticizing them like our opinion matters to them. Playing make-believe that they actually care what us peasants think of their castles. They were ugly. I'm just gonna say it. They were ugly. And it's not because I'm jealous. They were ugly. I don't know, what do you think? You like those square box type of houses? I'd like to see the inside. My opinion of the inside would probably be much different than the outside. We have a project for this evening though. We are moving this bed into the master bedroom and moving the king size bed in here because this bed is a lot more comfortable for Brit. And uh, since she's been having problems with her back lately, we're gonna give this a shot and see if this helps her to sleep better. It's like a twin bed. It'll be a little bit smaller and cozier, but I think we can pull it off and do it. The dogs just can't join us in the bed then. Good thing they got their own beds. Maybe now they'll learn to use their own beds, right? Right, Diesel? I'm still gonna be on your bed, man. I don't care. She took me right up there with you, man. Sneak in, middle of the night, like a ninja. So we got the other bed in there already. Gotta get the king size in here somehow. Try and get it to fit. That's the challenge. Oh no. There we go. Is it 
over the vent, though? Uh, one second, it's probably end up get it down first. Is it over the vent? Yes. Well, shoot. Yes. Well, I guess we What if we just... put it this way? Yeah. Try that out. Might be too long, though. All right. Try this. This is temporary. I want to burn this mattress someday. <laughs> it's caused me great back pain. This was my first king size, though. So? 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 <laughs> yeah. I guess it's kind of square. I didn't have to turn it. <laughs> so this is turning into the dog's bedroom and the dog's bed. And this in here is going to be our new bed. This is Britt's old bed and our guest bed. It's now our bed. It is much smaller. It is going to be much cozier, bringing us much closer together. I dare say this, this decision might result in a baby. Or murder. Or murder, one of the two. Let's hope, let's hope for the first. <laughs> and let's hope that this bed really does help her back. Let's give it a shot. The commander did not approve of this. Very angry. We defied the commander. He says we'll pay one day. By we, he means you. Me? Why just me? Is it true? Look at him. Can you see him in the dark there? Staring at me. It's true. She's nice. She smells nicer. Anyways, wish us luck. This is our new setup. It is a much, uh, it, it is a better mattress. It's just smaller. But everyone's got to sleep on the floor now. All right. Chevy's okay with it. Diesel, you going to be okay with it? No comment? Won't even look at me? Very upset. He's still going to try and sneak on. Middle of the night, he usually tries to sneak up. We'll see. Anyways, thanks for hanging out today, everybody. Tomorrow, uh, we go back delivering stuff. Might be in a truck, might be in a sprinter. I have no idea. We'll find out tomorrow. And then on the next day, well, we got all kinds of new stuff happening then. So tune in tomorrow. We'll be driving around delivering who knows what. <laughs>